I've been lazy flicking because I've been having these weird lag spikes. I think they're server issues, but yeah. Oh my god. Speaking of which, there it happened again. Lost HP and another prayer point. This really sucks when you don't have access to prayer pots. Hey guys, it's Randy again, and welcome back to the Iron Man from Hell series, episode number three. We have a lot going on in this episode, and finally we're going to get into some intense combat, some really cool things. If you're new to this series or this account, it's basically just a snowflake Iron Man concept I developed where I can't trade XP or GP directly for tradable items. And if I do end up doing this, I simply just have to drop the tradable item on the ground or get rid of it in any means necessary. Untradable items are a huge exception to this account, as well as any other means that gives me a direct tradable item without the need of GP or XP. If you are enjoying this series as much as I am making it, drop the channel a subscription. And of course, at 1 million subscribers, I will change my name legally to Rindy. If you haven't yet, get up to date, check out episode 1 and 2, I'll put in a playlist in the description below. Also, don't be scared to comment any advice you think could help this account along the way because I am a noob in many aspects of this game, and I appreciate all the helpful advice I've gotten so far from these comments. I sincerely and honestly would not be in a good place right now if it weren't for a lot of these comments I've had the pleasure to look over. So thank you, thank you, thank you all for your views and your helpful advice and everything I I've seen throughout this series it truly is amazing but lastly before we get into the meat of this episode i want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor of this episode and that once again is manscaped manscaped has always been a wonderful product that i've used they sent me their newest performance package 4.0 it included a lot of things such as anti-chafing boxers a nose trimmer a power docking station some wonderful smelling ball toner and deodorants and of course the lawnmower 4.0 this razor is honestly amazing i can use it in the shower it's fully waterproof and then i can dock it on my charger for a 90 minute full battery life as well it has a travel feature where i can click the button three times and lock it even though i will admit i am kind of a hermit and i don't get to use the travel feature as often as i like the best part though about the lawnmower 4.0 is that it avoids many nicks and cuts with its advanced skin safe technology and i've never had issues even trimming the most sensitive of areas that this product is meant for and that is your family jewels so what are you waiting for your balls will thank you start the new year off right and head over to manscaped.com to get 20 percent off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use Use the promo code RENDY at checkout. If you guys watched my last episode, you would have seen towards the end of it a couple of times I mentioned I really wanted a fire cape. And that was to unlock the fire cape and also possibly secateurs for Fairy Tale Part 1 and Fairy Rings. I'll get into that later though. Along with this, I'm probably going to try and get the Mage Cape today because that's also a best in slot cape for a very long time. And the first thing I realized already today besides the idea that I want these capes is that I accidentally dropped my last 7k with the pest control money I had last episode when I was dropping that because I did not allow myself to keep that since I actually used XP inside pest control. So here I'm going to sell just a few of these clue scroll items I got that were duplicates in order to get a base of GP once again so I can charter some ships and have some at least decent transportation. All the way in pest control I got from like 42 to 55 attack and strength. I also got 50 defense and 47 to 52 magic. So I'm going to start off this episode by just training to 60 magic. I think I'm going to get Claws of Guthix in this episode since I do have the Void Knight Mace now and I can auto cast it with that. Might even go for a Fire Cape with that Claws of Guthix. And the three items we need for medium clues that are super important right now are a Strength Amy Trimmed, which is going to be our best in slot melee for a very, very long time, as well as a Power Amy which is going to be our best in slot mage and range for a very, very long time. And then the most important thing is the U short bow, or I guess I could pull a U long bow if, if I really have to. That would be the best case scenario because then I could use ruin or addy arrows from last man standing points to train with, as well as to do activities that require range that are just more efficient with range, like the fight caves, because a lot of the NPCs in fight caves are very magic resistant. And that's why kind of Claws of Guthix is a second option towards that goal. As well, um, you know, I'm going to be actually attempting to maybe eventually get, if I'm really lucky, Manacles as a drop. Other than that though, Medium Clues, those are the only four items, a uh, fourth one as a bonus kind of, that I will be looking for. And I doubt I'll even get one if not even close to all of those in many many episodes down the line because even though some of these are quite common uh, my ability to do medium clues and the rate at which I get them at is extremely slow. I also might get hunter up 
to bare hand these eclectics I see in Gilinor for a 1 in 25 chance at a medium clue. That's like the probably the 15th eclectic I've seen just walking around. So I mean, it's literally free medium clue possibilities. And this one right here is literally tempting me. It's it's fucking with me right now. It's making me remember that maybe I should get Hunter up eventually. All right, we've already picked up a medium clue scroll here and we haven't even gotten a magic level yet. Let's see what this actually is. Okay, we can do this step. So the minimum amount of steps for a medium clue is actually three. So if I'm really lucky, I'm only gonna have to do three steps because the likelihood of me completing medium clues at this point in time is very low. All right, let's see what this is. Ooh, we can actually do this one, I'm pretty sure as well. No, I cannot do that. Mithril scimitar, well, no, there's no way I could do that. I mean, I could pull a Mithril Scimitar from like a mystery box, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Damn, we got to the second, no, but not the third step. I wanna try this route here. It's probably gonna cost me a lot of coin, but technically this is gonna be really fast. To get back to Falador, it looks like I could go to like Brimhaven here. 16, yeah, that's like half my cash stack. So I can only do this once right now. Um, and then I can go from here to this guy, go to Remington. And then I can just run north from Remington up until I get to Falador back to the guards. If only I had more GP, I guess I could pickpocket guards for more GP. Although I wanted to get rogues equipment first and 50 thieving. Uh, there's just so much work to be done on these stupid guards. There's that fucking Falador only Iron Man dude. Go check out his videos by the way, they're pretty cool. So I figured since I'm getting 60 range, I'm going to actually have to pick up a lot of these bronze arrows here. I've went ahead and picked up another 5,000 and I've been hopping around in F2P worlds because it's just less likely to get killed and I've managed to somehow save my hardcore status. But yeah, we're picking up bronze arrows still in the wilderness and hopefully, you know, once I can get that uh, U short bow, I'll never have to do this again. I can get all of my arrow supply from last man standing. But also, I hate last man standing. Another medium clue, can I do it? I don't know, I can't even open it. Fuck off. Oh, Devils May Care. I don't think we have this one, but I'm pretty sure we can get it. Smoke Devil Dungeon. Okay, I can get that real quick. It's by Castle Wars. Hey, have you ever heard of that soundtrack uh, called Devils May Care? You're asking me if, if I know where to get that, unlock that song? No, have you ever heard it? No. Is it fucked? I don't know, let me see. What's it called? Devils May Care? Yeah. I, mean, I like how he called it a soundtrack. <laughs> like it's from a movie. I'm trying to find it. On YouTube. What do you mean? Just log in and play it. Can you play well, members guy... tracks when you're in F2P? I don't see why not. You've unlocked the song. I don't see why not. But That's I fucked up, know. man. You didn't pay for that. It's like being able to use a whip when you're F2P. I didn't get the last recording, it froze, but uh, I had to drop that last clue scroll right after the Falador step because uh, she gave me one that required items I did not have, like a Mabel Shortbow. So yeah, we're back here. We've been killing a lot more of these scents for over an hour almost, I think, and we still haven't gotten another one. Finally, after like hours, we've picked up another medium clue here. Let's see, can we do it? <laughs> oh my God. I don't have Canifus unlocked yet. Should I go? Should I go try to get the Pure Essence at Soul Wars? Fuck it, let's try and go get the Pure Essence at Soul Wars. I'll try a few games and if I don't get it, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm gonna have to beat someone up. Game. <sighs> to Soul Wars we go. Let's get these Pure Essence and let's just try and do Priest and Pearl while we have the clue step. Fuck it. It's some kind of motivation to do it. All these OP mains like this guy right here in the Obsidian Helm keeps stealing my kills. I can't even get Soul Shards at this place. Give me a break. I'm a fucking trash man. Three Spoils of War. I have 90 zeal. Let's see what we can get with that. Hopefully we can pull the, um, the Pure Essence we need. Alright, let's see what we get. <laughs> right off the bat, man. And I got the sharks again. All right, let's open the rest of these. Uh, some more off, some uncut rubies, ruined bolts. Jesus Christ, these things are overpowered as fuck. Okay, so we've got the pure essence already for Priest and Peril. Thank God I don't have to do any more of this Soul Wars for the time being. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete that quest, Priest and Peril, that is. And so that means we can do this medium clue step. <clears throat> All right, take my last pure essence. Let me through this barrier finally. We're on episode three and we just now have Priest and Peril access. 
Okay, also he's gonna give me a wolf bane like here. I don't know if that's ever gonna be useful, but it is an untradeable. Might as well start nature spirit because that'll allow me to get through the gate. And he gave me a free few pies. I forgot about that. So that's going to maybe come in handy. Hopefully we can pull a three step clue off this or something. Of course, the clue right after this one is one I can't do. So I'm going to have to drop that yet again. I keep getting these equipment clues and there's a lot that aren't equipment clues. So I'm surprised like it keeps coming up. I'm just that unlucky. I'm going to go ahead and try something while I'm here. I'm going to bank these pies in case I ever need them because I don't know if I can ever get pies like this again. I don't know if they'll ever be useful. If only he gave me a red berry pie, I could go back and finally do the knight's sword quest, but unfortunately he did not. So, And I'm going to go start Shades of Morton quest because I have an idea to actually get my herb lore possibly up without doing druidic ritual, and that is through the first step of Shades of Morton. My idea is to... um. Basically, if I can get this book, the wiki says you can actually turn in the book from Shades of Morn from the first step of the quest, and you can turn it in for Herblore XP. I think it's 330 something, and that's exactly four Herblore. So it would get us past the initial three you need from Druidic Ritual, and possibly we could then train Herblore and do all these Herblore quests. I don't know, it's a long shot. Probably someone has to have tried to do this by now, but it's a really kind of Easter eggy thing, anyways. Like, who who the fuck is gonna take this random quest item and turn it into the Apothecary in Varrock for Herblore XP, anyways? So I'm gonna go try that. There's probably gonna be something stopping us, but we'll we'll give it a test. Bro, these motherfucking gas rot fucking metal jugs of wine. These things are powerful as fuck. They got jaws of steel. So we were able to get the diary. So this is a good sign. I think we can maybe we can maybe take it to the apothecary and maybe he'll give us XP or maybe he'll like block us out of it. We'll find out though here in just a few moments. No. When you're finished with the diary. Fuck. Fuck. So I actually have to do this step of the quest first. And I can't because that requires 10 herblore. I am finished with the diary. Take it off my hands, please. Mission failed. I'm literally using my friend right here, the stray dog, as a safe spot for these guards. Because he follows you around. <laughs> and he can stand in front of them. How fucked up is that? <laughs> So, I just got 59 magic and still not another single medium clue somehow. I'm pulling 20k magic XP an hour, killing hundreds and hundreds of guards, just getting super unlucky with that. But I've realized this is going to be my plan for this episode. I'm going to get 60 magic on guards, and then I'm going to get 60 range on guards. And why that is, is I want to see if I can pull a medium clue and finally complete one in hopes that I get a U short bow or long bow. So if I don't actually pull a U short bow or long bow before I get 60 of each of these stats at guards, well then I'm going to have this secondary backup plan. And that is, I'm I'm going to actually go steal ruins from a chest in the rogue's castle area that has a very slight chance of giving natures and blood ruins. And when I say very slight chance, I mean it is a very slight chance indeed. And I'm going to be spending hours and hours and hours while trying to get around 3,000, I believe, blood ruins from many casts I can use with Claws of Guthics. I'm then going to charge the Guthics staff with Claws of Guthics with 100 of those Blood Ruins. I'm then going to be using the rest of the 2900 casts inside of the Fight Caves on every NPC but the Majors because the Majors are super resistant to any kind of magic damage. So I'm going to be using Claws of Guthics just for that as well as maybe some Binds and Snares for the level 22 birds that attempt to get my prayer down and I can get them in a safe spot and kill them before they even touch me. Now, what I'm going to be using for prayer likely is Jenga berries. Now, I do have a backup plan that I can actually get some form of restore potions from without having to use Jenga berries, but honestly, I want the challenge of having to use Jenga berries. And when I say I want the challenge, I mean these things only give one prayer point per bite. So I'm going to be prey flicking this whole entire fight cave, but I'm going to be doing this, you know, with these level 22 bats on me and multiple NPCs on me, which is something I've really never done. So it's going to be a new experience for sure. And what I was going to use range on was the level 360 majors, because like I said, mage on them is not very effective at all. So by the time I'm 60 range, if I don't have that use short bow with those LMS rune arrows, then I can simply just sell some of these chaos runes I'm about to gather more of and sell them for Tockle 
because Taco is an untradeable, and then I will use that Taco to then buy some obsidian rings that I can use specifically only for the level 360s or whenever I need to just kill something extremely fast. So by the time I'm 60 range, I'll be able to wield those rings and I will now gather more Chaos Ruins. Now you might say, 50,000 Chaos Ruins, that's a lot. It's gonna cost me about 19,000 Chaos Ruins in Taco just for those 500 rings. Yes, even with the Karamja gloves equipped and the Karamja easy diary done, which I believe I can fortunately do. So I'm waiting up here once again for the 15 minute degression timer and I'm going to be hopping worlds for those chaos ruins and just gathering hopefully another 18 to 19,000 of those. Okay, we finally got a clue. Finally, finally, finally. And it looks like we can actually do this one. Okay, well, let's go do it. Wow, surprise. All right, here we are. Give me something I can do, please. I think I can do this one. Yes, I can. Archaeus Library. Oh my god, that's far away, but that's hella worth it. Okay. Is this going to be the first clue we can do at medium level tier? Um, I guess we'll just find out. Yes. Okay, if this is a third step clue, this will be completable, but, you know, that's a long shot, so. Oh, and Paul Navich. So... I don't have any laws left because I had to drop them, I found out, as a punishment. Um, but I can go through Eagle's Peak all the way in Piscatoris area. Oh god, that's far away, isn't it? We're doing it though, we're going through the bird tunnels. Please give us a casket. Oh my god. I could still do this one. Somehow, and it's all the way back in Zaya. Fuck me! All right, the answer's five. Yes, okay, we got the casket, our first medium casket. Please give me a U-bow of some sort. If not, I'll take a power ammy or a strength ammy T, please. Fuck, I don't need any of that. <laughs> None of that's use. It could have at least given me an Addy pickaxe or an Adam and Axe. Maybe I'll get another one, who knows, probably not. You know what I just realized as well? I can never wear this dehyde body because I can never do Dragon Slayer because I can never get silk. There we go, 60 magic, finally. It's been hours and hours and hours. I did not think it would be this slow. We've gotten 60 magic now, that's our magic goal. Only one medium clue entirely completed from 52 to 60 magic over, I would say, seven hours of game time to get that. So now I'm gonna go and train range to 60 and see if I can get any more medium clues. And if not, our backup plan comes into place. Let's continue slaying guards, but this time with Picked up bronze arrows and a willow short bow. Just got another medium clue. Let's see if we can do even the first step of this thing. All right, another clue. Okay, this is looking perfect. I can do this step as well. Maybe if we're once again super, I mean, not once again. If we're lucky, we'll get a three step. All right, can we get a three step medium? Let's find out. No, we cannot. No, fucking hell, man. Another medium clue. Let's see if we can do the first step. And we can, let's head over that way. All right, here we go, this should be the casket. Please give us a Ubo, please, please, please. Oh, no Ubo, but power amming, not bad at all. That's actually gonna be my best in slot amulet now. I'll take that, I am satisfied with that. Okay, let's go kill some more guards, hopefully get a Ubo. But uh, the power ammy, at least that's something after all these guards I've grinded out. It's good to see some form of item that I can actually use here. All right, already another medium clue from guards. Let's see if we can do it here. We cannot, we cannot do Dragon Slayer up to that point. Unfortunately, we cannot get the silk and possibly the nails. So we're going to have to drop this one. Let's see if I can pull something super lucky from this mysterious box. Let's see something cool. Oh, what the fuck? That's actually like our best flinch weapon right now. Holy shit. That's actually really rare. What I want to see what the chance of that is. That is a 1 in 640. That's actually insane. Like, let me see the stat difference on this. So yeah, that's that's upping us a whole 24 strength bonus. We didn't even need to waste the 16 hours on this mace now. Whatever, fuck it. Thanks, Quizmaster. That's a big surprise. New best in slot, fl like, flinching weapon. Probably also everything weapon, to be honest. Here's another medium clue, right after the ruined battle axe. And it's right over there. Let's do this. 
So I just got the clue step that wants me to go inside of the lighthouse. So this means I'm actually going to have to do the bar crawl and start Horror from the Deep. Unfortunately, I cannot finish Horror from the Deep because I don't have the molten glass requirement or the uh, swamp paste requirement. So um, it's going to be really tedious with this stupid walk method. But, you know, we're just going to have to walk around the entire map. And hopefully I even have enough GP on me to finish this. But... If not, we'll just see. You know, I'm actually halfway through bar crawl right now, and I know a lot of you are going to say, well, you only have to get the key from the guy inside the barbarian place. You don't have to repair the bridge. But in fact, to get inside the lighthouse during Horror from the Deep Quest, you do have to repair the bridge, and I'm looking into it now. It requires two planks, but also it requires 60 steel nails to repair that bridge. And as of right now, I do not have a way to get steel nails. Now there might be a way to do this with just iron nails. I highly doubt it though. I would give it like a 1% chance of that even working. That's why I've just decided, I think for now, I'm gonna drop this medium clue step and bank the bar crawl card uh, because uh, I don't think it's going to even be necessary to complete this. I guess I can every now and then do a step of it if I really want to and then one day try and get some iron nails from the, the spawn of iron nails in Shazian, but I really don't think that's going to work and I think we're going to need to somehow get steel nails and I don't consider the reward pool giving us steel nails exactly um, fair because it gives fishing XP whenever you look inside of it from... Uh, Temporos. So until we find a new way to get steel nails, I think that's just going to have to do. All right, we've looted some more arrows and some more ruins. We're heading out to the big city, back to Falador to kill some more fucking guards like I'm always doing. So uh, be prepared. Maybe another medium clue will finally be completed as well. I got some more arrows because this just means I'd rather pick them up now than pick them up while I'm killing guards. It's just more AFK and relaxing if I can just sit there and spam shoot arrows at guards. So that's why I decided to get more arrows. Here we go, finally another medium clue at 47 range. Let's see if we can do it. We can. We've already done Priest and Peril, luckily, too. I knew this would come in handy because there's actually a lot of medium clue steps in Canifus and in Mortania, so I'm kind of glad we got that out of the way and got the pure essence we needed for that. I'm going to head that way now and see if we can continue on. Here's an example of what my route looks like currently in order to even get to Canifus. Sooner or later, I need to come across some jewelry. Now, I think there is a non-tradable item you can get from Temporos, so technically it wouldn't be exchanging direct for XP because the, it does give 10 XP when you open the reward pool from Temporos. But um, you get this untradable item that then gives you the chance at rolling a lot of jewelry, and eventually I can make a jewelry box, I think, and put a lot of that stuff in and enchant it at the, uh, the ruin, whatever the fuck it's called, altar in the wilderness that gives zero XP, so that's a long-term goal. Let's head over to... Artie. And so from Artie, this is a really fucked up route, but, but from Artie we're going to go to the spirit tree by the Khazard area, and then we're going to take that to the Grand Tree. We're going to go north to the glider, take the glider from the Grand Tree to dig site, <laughs> and then walk to Mortania. can actually get to this one as well and we cannot get a three-step medium but somehow we can actually do these clues so I'm not complaining let's do this next step all right let's see what we get please be a Yubo. oh my god yes I don't even have to get 60 range now I don't have to waste chaos ruins on obsidian rings I can just go ahead and do some last man standing where I am wonderful great at and get some ruin arrows. Yes, that is huge. That is exactly what I needed. It's not even a long bow, it's a short bow. Upgrade to the bow, and it will be an upgrade probably for a very long time, so that is super nice. I haven't even hit 50 range yet, so this is gonna be good. So you know what I'm thinking. I really hate last man standing, so I don't know if I should stick it out and get ruin arrows for fight caves or if i should just go for addy arrows with a third of the points for even more arrows uh because i can already get over a thousand of those off like one game so i mean i don't know i'm kind of leaning towards addy arrows i was also thinking about getting a ruin pouch but then i realized it's 75 points and i'm gonna be bringing like literally like binds with me although even with all of that, I don't think it's really worth it. I don't even think I'm gonna bother with a ruin pouch just because 75 points, 
At least for right now, that sounds terrible, so... I say we just rock up with the Addy arrows. Okay, so strategy's gonna be same as last time. Oh, there we go, kill. We're gonna get a kill, and then we're gonna go hide. And of course, this guy's already following me, so I can't even hide. Get away! He's finally caught up to me, and he took his helmet off. Oh my god, that's it. That's how you know you're dead. Thank guys, this guy has iron in his name. He's dead. He's dead meat. I think he's out. I think I'm actually gonna get a kill for once. Like, this is the fifth game? Yeah, okay. See you later, bud. I'm so good at this fucking game. Let's go hide now. Oh my god, there's another person right there. No, no, no. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Go away, go away. What? Through prayer? How the fuck did that guy hit a 42 through prayer? Nibbler, stop it. God damn. Fuck. Finally got another kill somehow. That's one whole point. Okay, get me the fuck out of here. There's going to be someone else coming at after me. Oh my god, is that another person? How did these people find me? The last few times I've done this, I've had no one find me. God damn it. Fucking hate this game. This game's going to give me a fucking stroke. Can't even blink. Who's on me? Oh, this guy's got PK in his. All right, yeah, just kill me. You got PK in your name. <laughs> okay, this guy's a bot. He's one ticking. Watch this. The simplest way I found to deal with these guys is to just get a barrage on them. And then, so at that point, they can only range or mage you. So I'm going to switch to the staff here. So once I get in the far cast range, I protect range. So it keeps trying to mage me. He has his robes on now. See, look at this. And I one tick switch into the crossbow. So I just hit straight on his robes with his mage protect up. See, after a whole 10 minutes, we finally got his food, his inventory down. I think that, yep, that's it. Oh, and of course this guy pops around. Fuck you. Go away. Go away. Fuck off. All right, some adamant arrows. Still need some more though. After I bought those Eddie arrows, this is like the fifth match here. And yeah, here we go. Let's try and get this one. Why, why am I on long range still? What the fuck? Oh, and I'm dead. Great. Love it. Fuck it, I'm leaving this place, dude. I can't be asked to get any more arrows from this fucking shithole. All right, I'm at the rune altar, so I'm gonna out this piece of shit right here since I'm never gonna be able to wear it. Nice 4K. And now I'm gonna head over to those chests I was talking about that are like completely useless for normal people, but there's like a one in 50 chance you pull like two natures or two death runes out of them and there's no XP exchange for them. We're gonna be spending probably like 10 hours there getting enough blood runes for fight caves as well as just to charge the staff. And of course some snares I'll be getting for like the bats in the fight caves, I believe. So we're gonna be here for quite a fucking while. So yeah, this is really good. I'm getting a lot of ruins right now. Definitely haven't been doing this for three minutes without a single blood ruin from this chest. But as you can see, no XP is given and we're on the upstairs of the rogue's castle. So yeah, we're gonna do this for a long while. It seems like my finger is already about to fall off. Oh wait, never mind. We got two blood ruins, two bloods. Can I get 3000 more? Just 3000 more, please. I just realized how long it takes to thieve shit out of that chest. It's a 1 in 50 chance to pull a blood rune. I was there for like 10 minutes and I got 5 blood runes. So I might later get enough just to charge the staff and get my mage cape. But, you know, honestly, I don't know if it's worth it. I might just instead use this rag range for the entire fight cave. Therefore, I might go get some new Addy arrows through that terrible minigame because I don't think 3,000 will be enough with this low of a range level. And yeah, unfortunately, it's just going to be one hell of a fight cave. I thought I was going to be able to claw off Guthics, everything but the majors, but unfortunately, this is just too damn slow. I cannot click that chest for more than enough ruins I would need to charge the staff, which is like 200. Also, for some reason, I had in my mind that each cast was only one blood rune. That's definitely not the case. It's two, so I mean, I can do it for a little bit more, but uh, I think I'm just going to go for a rag ass fire cape with Jenga berries instead. I think I have some nature ruins in the bank, so I might use those for some binds on the bats and just switch the helmet uh, with the bind. That's what I'm thinking, and it's gonna be a struggle. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it done. But we can at least try it. The worst thing we're going to lose is not bronze arrows, Addy arrows. Okay, so here's the Jenga berry spawns. It consumed my rope getting on this island. The only way to get that back is to once again go to Karamja, unfortunately, and I'm gonna need that for a lot of clue steps and whatnot, so we're gonna have to do that too now as well. This is this is where I backtrack once again, and 
I am going to join Lisa in the fight against last man standing players and want to rip my eyes out the entire time. At least for another 3,000 arrows, I think is what I'm going to plan to do here. So that's going to leave us with 6,000 Addy arrows for the fight caves. I'm not going to be trying to pick them up. So we might we might even need more than that because my range level is trash and my accuracy, especially on the 360s, is going to be trash. We'll just have to play it by ear kind of and hope that my terrible estimation is going to work out. Okay, there's three survivors here, so I just have to let one of them kill the other one, and then I can fight the guy in the final round, and the benefit of that is I get four points instead of three. There's a bonus if you make it to the final round. I've got to outlast this guy here. This guy's smart. He's actually doing the same exact shit as I was, so I'm trying to actually trap him in the fog further back than myself. Yes! <laughs> this guy right here is very a very hard fight. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill him or not. Oh, wow, look at that. That's how you do it. That was the hardest fight of my fucking life right there. Whew, now we just gotta hide till the end. Oh, another kill. Okay, these fights are getting way too intense right here. Now I'm gonna run to the corner and hide. Holy shit, there's fog. I gotta inch the fog. Edge the fog. Whew. My eyes, they're watering, dude. I'm so bad at this game, but I, I just can't blink or I'm even worse. I'm literally, I'm literally crying right now. Just, just to get these Addy arrows, I'm crying for you guys. You know, once we get this fire cape, we can unlock farming. I know that, I know that sounds like a joke, but it, I'm 100% I'm serious. Now, this won't be done entirely in this episode, but I wanted to mention this because I probably confused a lot of people when I said I need a fire cape to do farming and unlock farming and possibly fairy tale part one. And a lot of you said inside the comments I could actually go inside raids one, pull a seed dibber out of a supply crate, and use that to unlock farming much easier than probably my current plan. And you are right, but I also need the second tours anyways to attempt to do fairy tale part one and to attempt to get those fairy rings, so I might just do them both in one go. And the plan was this. I was going to actually get a tool shed inside a player-owned house at I think 55 or 58 construction, something like that. Now, the only way I'm going to be able to get oak planks is through mahogany homes, and mahogany homes requires steel bars. Here's the catch. Steel bars are very hard for me to get. I can get them through the task-only Brimhaven dungeon, but I don't want to do that because it has extremely high requirements, and I'm going to have to get a, like, crazy task just to get down there and to get that bar. Instead, I'm going to be doing this. This is where the fire cape comes into play. I'm going to actually be going into more El Rec once I have access there with the fire cape, and I'm going to be going to the ore shop where I'll then exchange taco, which I'll then get from selling chaos ruins, for iron ore. I'll use that iron ore and the coal I already have in my bank from Motherload Mine, which I exchanged pay dirt for, and then I'm gonna take that to the Fountain of Ruin and use the Superheat item spell. And the Superheat spell does not actually give smithing or magic XP at the Fountain of Ruin. I know weird as fuck, but it does not. I tested it myself, and somehow not only does it negate the magic XP, but it negates the smithing XP. Therefore, I could keep the steel bars from the Fountain of Ruin, and by using the superheat spell, by using the Moral Rec Shop, Tackle, and all this other very convoluted bullshit theory here, in order to get steel bars, do mahogany homes, get the oak planks, and then build the thing at 55 construction. So that's the plan. That's what I meant by unlocking farming with a fire cape. It's very convoluted, but I think it's going to be our best bet, and we need a fire cape anyway, so why the fuck not? But yeah, farming is not going to be in this episode that's just the reason a big reason i'm actually getting this fire cape today i think that'll be enough that's my famous last words but six thousand arrows i mean come on do you think i'm gonna use more than that if i cannot stand this mini game anymore i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here now i've gotta go do fight caves I'm just gonna play it by ear and look wave to wave i guess try and do this extremely welfare cape with limited prayer points no prayer pots it's gonna be hard, but I think I think I can I can manage barely. I've never actually tried something like this, so I don't know. We'll see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the prayer boost up here in the monastery, just because we're gonna need all the prayer we can get because these are only one prayer point each, and obviously I want to start off with as many prayer points as I can possibly have. So even this small boost here of plus two, 44 to 46 is gonna be very handy. I still think uh, rotation two, as they call it, we used to not have names for these things back when I did it. We just would say wave one center, wave two south, southeast for the bats. But uh, that one right there is going to be my best bet. It's honestly the best one for low level capes. That's what we're going to be relying on is that rotation number two. And it's based off of time. So if I go in the fight caves at a very specific time, then that global time will always have that spawn I want. So in our case, I haven't looked at my chart yet, but... um. 
I'm gonna have to pull it off of my old computer even to look at what time I should enter the cave exactly at in order to get the spawn I want. So let's see. Yep, okay, bat middle. That probably means the next wave will be bat south, bat southeast. So I got the time correct, it looks like, unless I just somehow got the other center first wave spawn, which is a possibility, but very slim chance. Um, I had to go back with daylight savings time and adjust some of the times I had on this old file. Looks like southeast right there, and then south right behind it on the minimap. Yep. So we should be good here. By the way, this is a great uh, safe spot for NPCs right here on the corner of this vent on Italy Rock. I use this all the time. This will probably save me a lot of prayer points as easy and stupid as this sounds right now. So we've gotten to the range waves and I found that flicking right here, like one tick flicking until the actual NPC comes into range because you don't know when it's going to attack you is the best way to do it. And then I just, yeah, lazy flick like this and click the NPC and here we are. We're now just in the actual range of the NPC lazy flicking it because lazy flicking is actually way more safe and secure than one tick. So this is a bat wave I have to actually bind. Here we go, okay. I, I haven't splashed yet, and I think this is the second wave only, but hopefully this continues. It seems to be working pretty well with the void magic bonus. I can get these bat kills out of the way when I need to. All right, so I've done this a few times already, but I want to show you guys that sometimes it's much better to just actually go for the next wave than log out. It's just not worth my time to log out every wave, but on a lot of waves, I will log out uh, just to kind of realize where my best positioning is to make sure no bats hit me. Because it does take some time to figure that out, especially like I'm doing on the fly here. And once again, uh, I know exactly where everything spawns this wave off the top of my head. So I could just go here and the bats safe spotted behind the 90 and all of that set up. Okay, wave 22. This is going to be another little tricky wave here. I've got everything safe spotted over there, but I have a bat coming down. So I have to catch a snare on it. There's been a few of these waves more than I thought. And oh my God, I thought I was about to run out just then. Almost did. Let's see if long range can hit this thing. Oh my god, no, okay, get back, get back, get back, 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 back. Uh, I'm gonna try and bind this other one here in front of it so it catches them both off. Hopefully this, okay, we got an XP drop, so we should be good, this should be fine. And I'll have a little bit of a delay when this one dies with the animation in front to kill the other one, and I can just back step here. Should be able to kill this in a couple more hits. I still have not gotten hit by a bat yet, thank god somehow, but my prayer is doing amazing. Here we go, another snare, bind wave. I don't even know, what what is bind and what is, bind is the shit spell, we're snaring, okay. So even though this is slow as hell right now, look at that, 48 range. We are getting some XP, even though there's a lot of zeros. Another snare, barely in range to hit it with this bow, but right there. All right, so this has started to scare me. I planned not to pick up any arrows, but we somehow already had a thousand arrows consumed and we're only on wave 26. We're not even to the 360s yet, so. Yeah, I dropped the Jenga Berry. I'm going to juggle it for a while and try and pick up as many arrows as I can. So after I kill this right here, I'm going to try and pick up the arrows. Now, I do lose some just because of how long it takes to kill these things. And I don't want to run out at it and waste prayer um, and run back in. So I'm just playing it safe. I don't get all my arrows back, but I get quite a few. So And I can keep my Jenga Berry as long as I pick it up in time. So all is well. So once again, logging back out and in is super handy right here. The first mage spawn. I want to see how long this is going to take us because it could take a very long time. The 180s took a long time and, and we're also going to lose a bunch of arrows. Okay, so it looks like there are still some arrows on the ground. Let's pick up as many of these as we can get back, but we did lose quite a few. And there's an achievement diary task. Nice. Okay, so we used about 150 arrows. It was about a six minute kill for our first one. So once again, logging in and out to start the wave sometimes is just better. It gives you more time to figure out what you're doing next. And honestly, some of these waves, you just have to, you know, face a 22 like this and snare it and hope you can kill it in time. And so far we've gotten quite lucky with killing these, but our range is pretty decently high. So we should be able to kill these right here. This is probably the, actually the worst wave I have to deal with because there's two 22s coming straight at me and any other wave, I think it's only one. Oh my God, I forgot to pick up my arrows, no. I've been lazy flicking because I've been having these weird lag spikes. I think they're server issues, but yeah. Oh my God. Speaking of which, there it happened again. Lost HP and another prayer point. This really sucks when you don't have access to prayer pots. What the fuck was that? Did you see that? Did you see my screen like freeze up and shit? 
almost shit myself, dude. What the fuck is going on? So what's weird is my client was freezing up and now it's like my internet connection or the service. Look at this. Look at the delay on these clicks. What the actual fuck is happening right now? Someone is out to get me. Look at this. I can't even fucking move. Luckily, I just finished the wave and it's paused and I like requested logout because if I didn't, I would be easily dead right now. If not wasting like my whole prayer, uh, literally. Yep. Connection lost. Oh my God. This is terrible. Hell yeah. We just got 50 range. Our inventory is looking well full and we've just wasted a few prayer points mainly due to lags. I did fuck up once or twice and left a prayer on a tick or two too much. Other than that lags just kidding it's all because i'm terrible at this game 45 i like to consider once i've done this wave that i'm about halfway through so we'll look at our supplies after this in terms of like our actual arrows left i am glad that i started picking up arrows because <laughs> we would have been well under half we're doing okay on arrows i think i think we'll have like around a thousand when we hit jad maybe 1500 max i think we should have enough as long as i keep picking them up as decently as i am now and yeah, let me just kill this mage real quick and then I'll be considering myself halfway done. I might sign off for the night. I'm almost three hours into the cave and my neck is killing me. I'm getting too old for this shit. My back's hurting, my neck's hurting, my eyes are hurting because I'm looking at the vibrant red patterns on the floor. I really hate these patterns. As much as I people think I enjoy fight caves, I don't. I did enjoy it the first few times I had to strategize a new way to do it. But after that, when it just becomes repetition for me, that's when I hate something, when I've done it more than once. Um, I guess technically I haven't done this yet, but it's still kind of the same strategy as like a one prey cape or like a really low, 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 low combat cape. So just trying to conserve prayer as much as possible. And yeah, let's continue on and kill this 360 here. So a lot of people don't utilize this, but literally on some of these waves here, you can just use some of the bigger NPCs to trap other ones off you and you don't have to even deal with them. So on this wave, for example, the 360, by just letting it sit where it spawns, the 180 just decides to go right behind it because of where it spawns. I like to utilize the 360s and their spawn points a lot of the times in these caves. Now this is the OG fucked up spot right here. I, I've only ever used this like on two waves for like a level three cape, maybe level four cape before today. But yeah, if you have the right circumstances, you can literally trap a projectile NPC like this mage over here to the east of the melee. I wasn't positive, so I did pray flick just in case because I've only used this like twice in my life. But here we go. Now we're in range, see, because we have line of sight. And now we can attack the mage first, get rid of him. And then I can attack the bats behind the melee without them ever coming into contact with me and trying to lower my prayer. So all is well. This is a super weird looking uh, lure on this weird rock that's not even like a rock. But it does work in these very niche circumstances and with this fucked account. We're once again utilizing the east side of the north rock and, and a major. So he's going to trap, yeah, that bat behind him and the 45. So I don't have to deal with the bat head on. I can just long range it here. I could even rapid it, I think, and and get away from the melee on the west side of this rock, but it depends on the spawn. But a lot of the times, these majors, just from where they spawn, can trap a lot of those terrible bats behind them. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to eat my first Jenga berry just because um, I need to stop messing with juggling things. It, it cost me a prayer point earlier. Let's just eat this, get it out of the way. We now have inventory space for arrows without having to mess around juggling while prey flicking and everything. So I was gonna use the fucked up level three maneuver on wave 56 here, but I decided to not do that. I'm gonna unmark the tile. I'm just, I'm just gonna go with the original OG one prey method and go west here. Now I have to be fast. I'm probably gonna lose like a prayer point or two because I don't have time to even prey flick between the time I get my first projectile on me and the time I have to start moving because there's a 45 that gets trapped right up here. And if I was like a few ticks late, I mean, I, there is quite a bit of clearance, but if I was a few ticks late, uh, that would have not been as good. And I would have had to deal with that 45, which I guess on this account isn't the worst thing in the world, but uh, I'm just used to it. Next wave, I'm going to have to tank some damage likely um, from a 45, but we have defense. I don't think it'll be a big deal. We also have two swordfish in case. So once again, I don't think it'll be a big deal, but uh, let's just see what happens. I'm going to try and bind it off the bat too. Off the, off the rip. I shouldn't say bat because you're thinking I'm actually talking about a bat, but I'm not. I'm going to waste some prayer points here too, probably. Okay, so I think we got, yeah, it looks like we got the bind off, or the snare, sorry. We got the snare off and hopefully we can kill this. We're just going to one tick 
pray flick the mage in the back because we can't see it. We can easily tank these 45s, 22s. We barely lost any health. We're still above the max hit of the 40 or the 360 being a 48. So we're in the clear. Just lost some prayer points, unfortunately. But this is like the only wave I have to face tank anything on. So I think we're set. All right, wave 60. This wave is actually pretty easy. So we should be all good here. Arrow estimation is a little bit under what I expected. I expected to have this at Jad, and we still have a lot of 360s and 180s to kill, so we're probably going to have like 800, 900 at Jad is what it's looking like right this second. I am glad, though, I started picking up those arrows, or else I would be probably completely screwed right now, and we have just enough left to do Jad, literally. 61, another easy wave. The rest of it's easy till Jad. I'm telling you, I have not actually done one tick prey flicks on Jad in years and years and years, and I was never good at them. I always two ticked because my internet was so bad, I would just put the prayer up before Jad's attack. But I don't know if I'll have the luxury today to actually two tick flick Jad, considering my range level, I'm using Addy arrows, and we've only got so much prayer to spare. So it looks like I'm going to have to kind of train myself on the job here. Luckily, I brought an alt account over here to Jad just to practice some one tick flicking on Jad, and already I messed that up off the bat like three times. So if that was this account right here, it would have been dead instantly. I am extremely worried about this. And like I said, my internet, it's not the most stable thing in the world. So uh, that's another issue here with one tick flicking Jad as well. I, we've seen a few server lags today that have cost us prayer points and much more. And unfortunately, if one of those happens when I'm one tick flicking Jad, that might be the end of it, to be honest. So we have to hope for no server lag, no internet lag on my end, and no client lag, which we've also had, and then me actually perfecting everything to a queue, which I'm not good at with these one-tick flicks, I will tell you that. I'm not a great player at this game, I just like planning things out and, and executing them isn't my strong suit. So, let's see what happens. Still one-tick flicking. On the test account. Oh, I think that was off. Oh, fuck me. I hope that doesn't happen on the real account. Success! So I recently had a tip off that during that whole shenanigan fest uh, last year, people were apparently like, not no joke, like multiple J mods, a couple of them were literally like coming up to me next to me invisible watching what I was doing. And like they just sit here and watch my actions invisibly next to me on literal accounts. So in case you're watching, Maybe they were, they're here to watch this intense Jad fight though today. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put on a show for them. All right, let's do the real thing now. I think I've got it down. I'm more worried about my ammunition being less than a thousand, considering how long this takes. So first things first, I'm gonna eat some of these Jango berries. Uh, I might as well just get my prayer up as much as I can. I don't really need to like sit at low prayer because there's no bats around. I haven't gotten hit by a single bat anyways, by the way, haha. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I kind of didn't even need these, you know, I've only, I only used one before that and I was at like, what, 26 prayer, so I would have had 25 prayer points to do Jad, even with, I, these aren't even really necessary. I don't need anything for prayer, but, uh, just in case, I, I am gonna leave prayer on for some of the Jad fight, like, pulling the healers out, um, and I'll probably put my prayer up, like, a tick early on some of this fight, something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just eat, eat up. My defense level's going down, though. Maybe I'll just eat up to that for now. <laughs> I want some defense in case I have to tank a hit, I guess. All right. Jad with a power gammy, a U short bow, some Addy arrows. Okay. And some fucking graceful boots. And of course, some Jango berries. Whew, come on, make sure I had to wipe the sweat off my hands here. All right, let's do it. Yes, I have the metronome on. I'm a fucking noob. Chill out. All right. Thumbs up. Let's do this. Don't fail. Don't fail me now, my hands. My poor, old, 27-year-old arthritis hands. That's right, come out, you filthy healers. Meet your fucking destiny, my you shortbow. I almost said longbow. I wish it was a longbow, because oh my god, that was scary. Yeah, I wish it was a longbow. Am um, I gonna leave prayer on now while I'm dealing with these things? I can't believe I didn't hit that thing off. It's got even more HP now I gotta deal with. That means I have more ammo I gotta waste. Okay. okay prayer's good. Head back to the safe spot. Just kill these things. You know, I probably should have just lured Jad over to the safe spot and just face tanked him. Okay. Let's fucking do this. Try 
trying to kill these as fast as possible so I can loot my arrows before they disappear off the ground. I think I obviously lost a few because it took forever to kill those things, but we got some back at least here. Okay, let's eat some more Jenga berries. How many arrows we got? 721. Hopefully that'll be enough. <laughs> I'm not trying to loot arrows with that stupid healer aggroed on me behind him because the arrows are going to pop up behind Chad. Hopefully his HP didn't get too high either because I, I let my guard down and that, that guy, he was still healing him. I thought I tagged him, but I didn't. I can do this. I totally believe in myself and I definitely never choke things at the last second. I've never done that in my life. Just got a one tick prey flick and not lag. Ten, baby. There we go. Holy shit, six and a half hours. Holy fuck. Only 400 arrows left. Good thing I started picking those up when I did or else that would have been that. <laughs> There's only 400 arrows left in my quiver. We started with like 6,000 arrows. That is absolutely fucked. So technically, okay, 20 prayer points. We would have had 9 prayer points left. So we could have done this technically without the berries, but <laughs> better safe than sorry. So I'm glad I took these along with me and it just made me feel a lot more comfortable all the way through the cave, especially at the end there. So finally... We have a fire cape on her back. Episode 3. 68 combat, pretty high, but with these stats, this was a long cave, especially with the Addy arrows. I'm still glad I did not do Last Man Standing, though, because I would have very much enjoyed doing this over Last Man Standing by far, even if it took longer. So the Addy arrows are just fine. Now we can also get into more El Rec. And guess what? We can now unlock farming as well as a possibility of getting fairy rings of a very slight, slight possibility. So f our fire cape unlocks farming. As dumb as that sounds, that's how this account goes. This is garbage man mode, my Iron Man from hell, whatever you want to call it. But finally, we can now get into more Ulrek and Tackle will take us far here because Tackle is untradeable and I will be getting a lot of that. That's actually why I saved up so many Chaos Ruins was to sell for Tackle. But first, I'm going to need Karamja Gloves to get an extra boost of Tackle and lower prices in these shops. So let's go ahead and finish up with some Karamja Gloves and buy in some gear in our newly accessible city, Moral Wreck. So first things first, I actually need to get a new rope from this rope spawn over here. I'll get a few of them. Something consumed my rope earlier. I can't even remember what it was, but uh, it was picking up the Jenga berries. That's what consumed my rope going over to that island for some reason. And I've already actually done the pick five bananas step of this easy diary because I did that, I believe, when I was... What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was just trying to get GP and I picked... <laughs> bananas on the plantation for GP in the first episode, that's right. Gotta go mine some gold rocks and head over to the Moss Giant Island. It's a good thing I can actually pick these up for this task because my account is all focused around picking up items. So this diary is literally meant for me because I don't think I can do any other fucking diary except for this one. That's probably incorrect, but there's a lot of restrictions for this account and somehow in hell I can actually do the Karamja Easy Diary. I know it doesn't sound like much, the easy diary, but it's not so easy. Well, it is easy for me, but everything else isn't. I hate my life, and I hate this fucking line. Get off me! Guess what? I just killed a joker. It was very difficult, but I did it, and it made a little noise in the chat. All right, I can go acquire my gloves now, and I'm going to get to selling those chaos ruins and seeing what all we can buy with the taco we acquire, because the taco is untradeable. It's not coins. So by using this workaround, by selling the chaos ruins, I picked up off the ground for hours and hours and hours and days, actually, pretty much days and days and days. I can then get a lot of taco, possibly buy full obsidian armor, and then buy the um, obsidian weaponry, even though I can't wear any of this shit yet. I'm going to just go ahead and try and buy it all as well as the iron ore to unlock farming through uh, mahogany homes 
through the oak plank requirement, through the tool shed thingy majig. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a shit ton of taco and start using it. So let's go ahead and do that right after we get these beautiful gloves here. And I think farming is still gonna be our best bet. That's gonna give us a big boost to farming as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. Yeah, 10 farming, good shit. I just realized this is a much more efficient inventory spot to put these chaos runes in. So, you know, I'm not actually handicapped fucking just trying to right click sell 50 at a time. I can just right click, left click. Beautiful. I know. Such a, such a manip right there. All right. I'm just going to stop right there for now. I sold about half of them. I've got 266,000 taco, which is huge. Um, first things first, I want to see, I don't even know where the sword shop is in this place over here. It looks like this is going to be a huge upgrade. Finally can stop using the Baronite mace. All right, for now, I'm just gonna buy this. This does look like it's a four tick weapon. For some reason, I thought it was like a long sword, but it's just a stab weapon. I can't even wield it yet, but it's just a stab weapon that's a 60 attack rack. It's it's like this dragon scimitar, but it's, yeah, it's stab instead of slash. That's why I was confused. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the obsidian armor if I can afford it right now. I'm gonna go check out how much that's worth. So, oh, they have the same shit. Hopefully it's not Okay, it's the same price, I was about to say. Did they just fucking rip me off? Alright, so these are all pretty expensive, but I'd rather just buy these than honestly try and farm kills for it, because they are pretty rare and my account's pretty shit. So I'd rather farm for clue scrolls on guards or something than waste my time with these, with melee. So for now, I'm probably have to, gonna have to go back and sell some more chaos ruins, but yeah, I'm gonna buy one of these one of these and so why i'm switching to obsidian over void is it has the same bonus with this weapon so it's a 10 percent increased accuracy and damage just like void is but it only requires three slots i have an empty glove slot i can possibly get better strength bonus in my glove slot i have a plan for that for next episode and then also there is more defense bonus on the obsidian armor than there is on the void armor so i get a defense upgrade as well as the increased chance to hit with a glove slot so that's the plan is to get full obsidian with this scimitar. I might have enough for an obby mall too. I'm gonna use some of this taco as well, like I said, for uh, iron ores. So I just gotta see how many chaos runes I can really afford to keep. I would probably say like only 5,000 if even that. All right, so another 200,000 taco. I'm gonna go ahead and buy the helmet now. And I'll have a lot left over, honestly. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably gonna get this eventually. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just get that as well. It's the best flinching weapon we'll have for a very, very long time, even with our shitty power amulet. We're gonna have a lot of shit here to wield once we have the stats for it, which we don't. <laughs> and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This is just like a huge unlock for the account. So like, how much is this? 32 toggle? That's really dirt. You have the iron ores, 22 toggle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and buy these while I can. I've already got coal in the bank for a motherload mine. The account's finally looking fresh, you know. I'm really looking forward to playing this and seeing what I can hit even with this obsidian armor and whatnot. Oh, 8,000 tackle. I forgot we did a fire cape. We got another free 8,000 tackle. We've already gotten 60 magic. We, we can't have it for nothing, for no reason. I want to go ahead and, you know, farm some more of those chests till I finally get 200 blood runes. It's going to take a long fucking time. But yeah, I want to go farm those chests and um, basically try and get those 200 blood runes, charge the Claws of Guthic spell, and have the ability to use that outside the arena, as well as get a Guthic cape for best and slot mage bonus probably for a very long time until i get like infinity or maybe even um a dagon high way 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 down the road so that's what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna go back to those chests in the wilderness and actually stick it out this time not be a little pansy pussy bitch i'll probably be there for fucking like 10 hours trying to get just enough ruins to charge my staff um, but i'll also get some natures and some deaths along the way which i'll need All right, so here we are again. Let's search some fucking chests. Let's do it. See you guys in fucking 10 hours for real this time. I got the fire cape, but uh, that's just not good enough. We now need to get uh, some max mage bonus on. This is amazing. Five natures already. Wow. One in 40 something chance to get a fucking blood rune out of this thing. Only another 50 opens before we get some. Hell yeah. Look at this content. Here we are. I think this should be enough. I got a few extras just in case, just to practice afterwards, but uh, should be enough bloods to 
easily charge the spell up inside the mage arena. My poor fucking hands, man. Two and a half hours later almost to get these. All right, so I'm not gonna bring my void obviously out in 50 wilderness. I value that more than my hardcore status. So I really, you know, don't wanna die out here. But if I do, I'm just gonna lose a few of these death runes and a few of these chaos runes. I don't even remember if you can protect against these things. I only have 14 prayer points right now, unfortunately, but I don't wanna have to make another trip. I'm just gonna go ahead and set up to um, pray flick these if I have to. If not, I'll probably just have to leave the arena to be honest. So let's try and do Mage Arena 1. I haven't done this in years. Hopefully this guy over here doesn't fucking kill me. He's fucking scold, of course. Luckily I got these death runes from that chest as well. It makes this a lot easier. That guy's skull went away. Hopefully we brought enough death runes. We have 50 left, but this is his final form. I think it should be like just enough. Come on, like one or two more hits. We have 30 deaths left, we should be fine. So we actually completed that portion. I'm gonna go grab my cape. I think I need a Guthix cape. Do I need the Guthix, the staff to charge the staff or can I charge the, or do I already have the staff and can I get a new staff? Cause I have the uh, mace. So can I just go in the arena with a mace and charge that? First of all, I'm gonna hop worlds because that guy is sketching me out. I do not want to be charging my staff next to him. All right, so what is a typical balance cast? I probably don't even have the right runes for it. I'm gonna have to go back to the Dark Warriors Fortress, damn it, to get all this shit. Um, okay, well, let's hop into the pool. I'm gonna choose my cape at least. I'm a man of balance, you know, I'm gonna go with a Guthix cloak. But like, I don't know what staff to get from this guy. I'm probably just gonna wait on that because I might be able to get like a free Zami staff even since I already have a mace. I, I don't know if you can charge the spell with a mace, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Oh, I forgot you can get multiples of these now. Can you get multiple capes now? Oh, you can. This is like some new age shit, man. Back in my day, we could only get one cape and we could only get one of each cape. Times have changed. I'm a fucking old man now. All right, so we've got pretty new capes, but uh, yeah, we, we gotta still charge our staff. So I'm gonna head back to Dark Warriors Fortress and pick up some airs and some fires to charge the, the Gothic spell. All right, we've got over 500 of each rune, so I'm gonna go ahead and head out here before I get killed or something. You know, I don't know how this account has not gotten killed um, as many times as I've been out in the wilderness for long periods of time, but I've never had even like a run-in with a person, so. Success. I'm gonna make sure I can cast this outside real quick, just in case. Also, I'm gonna go get a free staff that's not a Guthix staff since uh, I already have one of those. Uh, because I haven't claimed my free staff yet, so it's gonna save me a lot of money. It isn't untradeable, so I could buy it if I needed to, the other staffs, but uh, I don't really need to at this time. So I'm gonna go do that real quick, as well as test out this spell on a guard in Falador. Why do you just give me a gothic staff? I didn't- oh my god. I don't need this! Oh, I guess I have to take it because now the thing is actually looking unlocked. Interesting. This account already is looking very nice. 68 combat, fire cape, full void sets, best in slot mage bonus with the gothic's cloak and the void knight mace. Everything is looking great. This Baronite Mace is soon to be totally irrelevant. It might already be, honestly, versus the Rune Battle Axe, but, uh, but it definitely will be once we get 60 attack and the new Obsidian Armor. So yeah, guys, what did we learn today? Well, doing a Fire Cape, first of all, with a U Short Bow and Addy Arrows, even if you're 50 range and in full void, takes upwards of six and a half hours. It's also possible to do with only Jenger Berries and no prayer potions, although very stressful and time consuming. Another thing we learned today is that we have a very good mage setup for this account if we ever need it. We have Guthic's Claws unlocked, as well as the Cloak and Void Knight Mace, of course, with an anti-fire shield. We also have acquired a Rune Battle Axe, and we've learned that somehow in hell there's a way to pull this thing out of a mystery box, one in like 700 chance, but we got it, and somehow this probably already outclasses the Baronite Mace I worked so hard for, and wasted all that time getting. We also learned that next video, I'm probably going to be going for a lot of the Obsidian equipment, or I've already gotten it, but we're going to be wielding it, and it's going to be a huge upgrade to our melee bonuses with defense, strength, and some more things. And I have a lot planned for this next video, not just that, so stay tuned, and if you did enjoy the video today, please leave a subscription on the channel. You will be notified when the next video comes out. Holy shit! I better take this. When the next video comes out, you will be notified. 
And of course, I'm changing my name to Randy at 1 million subscribers. You all know the meme, and I'll see you there. Damn it, I thought this was the fishing one. I'm not paying attention. Now I'm going to have to pop some fucking balloons. See you guys next time.